Beowulf, Age of Heroes. Hello, everybody. This is John Hodgson from Handiwork Games. And uh, we, we decided we would put together some kind of radio programs. I think they're called podcast style things. Well, you're probably listening to this on YouTube anyway, but never mind. See, I've already. This will all be edited out. I'm just getting warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here with Jacob Rogers. Hello, Jacob. Hello. So Jacob is uh, is my co-conspirator in in uh, creating Beowulf: Age of Heroes. We are not joined today by David Rea, who is our other partner in crime, who's who's formulated a whole bunch of the the rules stuff with us uh, for Beowulf. And we'll have to see if we can get hold of him at some point. But we thought what we would do is take a bit of a run through Beowulf: Age of Heroes um, as, as a book and talk a little bit about what's in there what it does in 5e because it's for fifth edition um and and pull out the interesting stuff that you might want to take a look at if it's something that sounds interesting to you um so just diving straight in shall we just dive straight in or or would you like to introduce yourself a bit jacob i'm gonna edit the heck out of it <laughs> that's quite um, right um yeah no let's, let's just go straight in um you know yeah we'll just get we'll just get on with it okay so the the book but it normally has eight parts. So just to sort of introduce those parts that we're going to run through, there is, well, it's got nine parts, in fact, because the introduction, there's the introduction and forward. Uh, and then there's part one is the world of Beowulf. Then we've got creating a hero, which got all your character generation stuff. Part three is followers. That's a really important part. Part four is the adventure, and that's a really huge section of the book. Part five is treasures. Part six is an adventure called The Three Ogre Brothers, written by Jacob. Part seven is the monsters section, and part eight is just a great big appendix of cool stuff uh, like tables and couch sheets and monster uh, sheets and stuff like that. So I think we'll probably end up breaking this up into mini programs for each section. I think that would be quite cool and make it easier to follow, and you don't have to sit down for like an hour to listen to this whole thing. So let's dive straight into the introduction. Okay. I'm going to pull that up. So I can remember what it looks like. At this point, we are deep in the final parts of of pulling the PDF book together. Beowulf, Age of Heroes. So, do you want to give us a rundown of of what's in the introduction, Jacob? Okay. Yeah, uh, we were very fortunate to have uh, Maria Devana Headley uh, provide the forward for us. Uh, if you don't know, she uh, just recently released a uh, translation of Beowulf uh, that uses a very modern uh, approach, uh, and it has just been—it's absolutely fabulous. Uh, and she's been uh, well recognized for. Uh, just absolutely blowing it out of the water. And we are very excited uh, that she was able to provide a foreword uh, to introduce us to the world of Beowulf. It was very good. Yeah, it was a, it was a really nice piece of timing that, that we were able to to secure Maria's participation. I was, yeah, I was blown away as well. It's a really good introduction. She could have sent us anything, actually, and I would have been very happy and honoured, but it's really good. So that was, you know, that's very, very nice. And uh, I, I don't think we should say too much about that. I think it's for people to discover and read if they want to. If if you've read her fantastic new translation, um, it's it's along similar lines to the introduction to that, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. So we've, we've got our own little bit of that stuff, which yep. is great. Yep, and then we've got our introduction itself, uh, where we talk a little bit about, you know, what is Beowulf the poem, uh, what is Beowulf the setting, uh, and what the game is. Um, so uh, we, you know, try to take from the, the poem and the tradition of the adventure story and translate it and bring it into a game uh, Primarily for uh, duet play, one player, one GM, uh, and translated into something that you'll be able to use uh, very, very easily to create uh, exciting adventure stories uh, for you and a player. Yeah, it's very, it's very much about taking the kind of spirit of, of of a sort of implied world we see in the poem and making it something you can play. 5e adventures in um and yeah the, the probably the key thing which you mentioned there jacob is the duet play so one gm one player and this kind of came about didn't it through 
When we first, it seems like a very long time ago, we first were setting up Handiwork Games and we were kind of deciding what we wanted to do with our time and what we were interested in, what we were good at, what we knew about. And, and that all coalesced quite simply into taking what we knew about Beowulf and this idea, I can't remember exactly when it came about, but this idea of, of duet play, one player, one GM yeah. for 5e, yeah. seemed just really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was very fortuitous. I mean, again, we made the decision a long time ago, uh, way in the before times, um, yeah. and uh, it just seemed appropriate uh, for the material. Um, and again, that uh, came together relatively quickly, I think, uh, for that decision. Mm. And then that created a whole bunch of other things that we'll talk about a little bit later when we get to followers, uh, especially. Um, but you know, that was a development process. But uh, it was something that we did start with very early, uh, that we were going to produce a duet game. Uh, and that, you know we were going to take on the challenges associated with that. Um, so... Uh, and then it kind of worked out that, you know, the world has become different. Uh, and now uh, a duet play uh, is especially uh, advantageous if you're uh, still at home, trapped, um, and yet somebody to play with. Uh, this game can be a really, really good asset to you. Um, you know, just because it provides the structure to play that game with just a single player. Yeah, we it's been really for well it's not been really fortunate that there's been a global pandemic <laughs> before we get into that um but yeah it's it's a handy thing to have in in these times where it's it's harder to socialize and it's easier i mean it's all the way down the line one of the really great things about it has been how easy it is to get a game together where there's just one gm and one player and i always really like the idea that it can f provide a really good fill-in game you know you right. might have your main campaign with a big group of friends but you know we all know what it's like i don't need to labor the point of trying to get a group together um even more so now but in the before times it was it's tough you know it's herding cats whereas if you can just phone one person and they they want to play i mean another great thing about duet this is the sort of place i think to talk about duet play in, in our little broadcast about this um it was great seeing play testers early on eyes kind of light up when they realized they only needed because you know, when you when you volunteer to play test the game you go, oh yeah i'll have to see if i can get the group together and i'll see if i can convince the group to play and then you realize you don't need to you just need one other person and that's really amazing i think i think it's, it's much more powerful than you at first think um and and that i think that informed a lot of the decisions in the way we've designed it because it's it, it's meant to be easy to pick it up you know as an occasional session between you and one other person and indeed we we have there's people on our discord now who are playing it based on the free scenario that we we um, gave out the hermit sanctuary which you can grab still free on drive through rpg um the hermit sanctuary any nominate any award nominated um i'm going to get finish this sentence eventually uh, <laughs> i can't remember where it was going i've completely gone um but yet the you can you can even play it with all of your gaming group one at a time and I think that provides this like phenomenal value per scenario. Um, and I think we, you know, we're writing the kind of scenarios that play differently with different people and different heroes. You set your heroes up differently, which we'll come to. So yeah, duet play is yep. a really interesting thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, um, yeah. Like you said, the play testers have gone and run different people through the same scenario, gotten completely different results, uh, and we think that's a really, really strong win. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it's lovely to hear about that happening with people. Um, something we haven't spoken about in the introduction is what is Beowulf, which I don't think anyone should feel ashamed if they don't know this stuff. We are so embedded in it and have been for a couple of years, it's really easy to forget. Not everyone knows what Beowulf is. So Beowulf is an Anglo-Saxon poem. It's thought to have been written down somewhere between 800 uh, BCE, uh, not BCE, CE, AD, as it's more commonly known. Let's just say 800 AD to about 1000 AD. No one knows exactly when it was written down. Um, and it, it's pretty much the oldest piece of literature in the English language, albeit written in Old English, but it still counts, I'm told. Um, and it's just, just, it's the source of so much stuff. So many fantasy stories really take a lot of cues from Beowulf. And I don't think we even, it's hard to realise how, um, sort of informative and formative it is for so much of the stuff we enjoy. 
Of course, huge influence on Tolkien, Beowulf. I mean, you'll find um, loads of stuff that that was was that influenced Tolkien to a huge degree within the poem. It's not terribly long. Um, if you're interested in reading it, the yeah Maria uh, Devana Headley's version is really accessible. Seamus Heaney's version that's my favourite. I think oh, I don't know if Maria's is more favourite now. Anyway, they're they're right up there. Um, and and yeah yeah it's surprisingly great i think as a, as a poem and it's uh, very quickly uh, it's just about beowulf who is an insanely strong um super duper chap from uh geatland he is about trouble in denmark where a, a fantastic hall has been built but it's being pretty much haunted and terrorized by a monster called grendel and he travels there finds out what he needs to know about the monster wrestles it rips its arm off then kills its mother, who is out for a bit of revenge. Uh, and then the whole poem fast forwards loads of years and King Beowulf is ruling uh, from his throne and his kingdom is beset with some pro problems, namely a dragon who he goes and fights, but will not spoil the ending, having spoiled every other part of the poem. But it's basically a scene. It's so similar. This is shocking and people will be upset, but it's so similar to almost like a series of encounters in D and D, you can you can do you know you can view it that way, and we have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll talk a little bit more when we get to the adventure. But there is a very yeah. uh, classical form to the poem and the structure of it, uh, which, like John said, has informed so much. So if you if you're new to the poem, you're going to see a lot of things that you've seen over and over and over again uh, in reading on TV, in cartoon shows, whatnot. It. Uh, we joke around about Scooby Doo uh, yeah. and during development a whole bunch, but it really is that the structure of the poem has informed you know the entire Western world so much that we see uh, that structure repeated over and over again in stories that we make and tell today. Yes, uh, we could totally do a separate show about that actually, and perhaps we should because um, I think <laughs> it's I think it's really fascinating. Yeah, the Scooby Doo stuff. Uh, we'll have to we'll, we'll remember to talk about Scooby Doo when we get to the adventure section because right. I think that's again it sounds ridiculous but it, it is quite seriously a, a, you know an, an influence on the structure of the game. Yeah. So I think that's about it for the introduction, isn't it? Sounds good. But that's that's your introduction to Beowulf, both in terms of this broadcast and the thing itself. There you go. Cool. Right. I'm just gonna drink some water now. Beowulf, page of 